Hello my dear students and welcome back to Excellence Batch and I am your Diksha ma'am. So here we have started the chapter evolution and we have covered some of the evidences of evolution. So today we are going to continue with the other some evidences. The first evidence we are going to talk about is biogeographical evidence. Okay. So in the previous class we have discussed the anatomical evidences and also the embryological one. Today we will be covering the geographical evidences. What are geographical evidences? So basically the geography, what does it indicate? It indicates the distribution pattern of plants and animals on earth. So it basically tells us that how the different type of organisms they are distributed on our planet earth right so this is a world map you can see so there was a scientist or a theorist a researcher his name was alfred russell wallis if you can see it his name was let me write it here alfred all right let me write it on the above only alfred Russell Wallace. So he went on a voyage. He went on a voyage to the Indonesian island, and the name of the island was Malay Archipelago. And there he saw the different kind of distribution of plants and animals. And he also went to voyage to the other, uh, you know various uh, areas on the earth but his main study was on this one island that is in the indonesia the malay archipelago right so in his study he concluded that according to distribution of plants and animals we can divide the entire earth into six biogeographical realms just like we have divided our uh, uh, you know entire world map into continents so he has divided them into six biogeographical realms and the division is basically on the basis of that uh, how the organisms are distributed so like he have given these six uh, realm you can see on the map the first one will start from here Neoctic. the Neoctic is a region in which you can see usa and canada right and in the new tropical you can see some central part of this um, uh, central america this portion and this entire is your southern america which uh, uh, comes under the neotropical realm in ethiopian we have africa in paleoctic we have russia and uh, europe in oriental we have mostly the asian and half part of the indonesia and in the australian realm we have some portion of the indonesia australia and the new zealand so technically he distributed on the basis of how the organisms are distributed right so on the basis of distribution of organisms he divided the entire world into six geographical biogeographical realms then what did he concluded by that he said that the ancestors were present at different periods in the history of earth all the existing life forms share similarities and share common ancestor so according to him whatsoever organisms are present right now on this planet earth somewhere they have a common ancestry for example we are humans we are mammals and reptiles are also there so we reptiles and we mammals somewhere down the line when evolution was occurring we had common ancestor so this is what he said all the existing life forms share similarities and share common ancestor now these ancestors they were present at the like very many million years ago the the geographical history of earth closely correlates with the biological history of earth now this is the thing he said he said that earlier the earth was present in the form of single land mass single land mass okay when the tectonic movements occur this uh, earth it distributed it distributed the single land mass was pangea you must have heard of this theory and later when the tectonic movements occur the entire planet it uh, get distributed and whatever you see right now is the result of that okay so when that uh, 
tectonic movements were occurring when these uh, real limbs or we can say these continents they were separating at that time organisms distribution also get disturbed let me give you a very simple example for example this is australia right so australia somehow it is meant that it was uh, present right here or we can say india was present somewhere right here okay so when the tectonic movements occurred the entire indian plate here it gets attached and when it gets attached the himalayas were formed right so this was indian plate it was uh, present somewhere else when it get detached from its original surface and get attached here the himalayas were formed so imagine imagine it was attached somewhere near the ethiopia so all the organism must be similar now these organisms along with that plate move to this region so it is said that the ge geological history geological history means that how the landmass was single then then it broke down and that resembles a biological history somehow the 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 distribution of those plates or disturbance of those plates has affected the distribution of the organisms okay so this picture is of the malay archipelago the indonesian island all right okay so uh, he then gave the distribution of organisms he said that distribution of organism is of two types one is discontinuous another is restricted discontinuous and restricted restricted means if one organism is present in one particular continent it or on a one particular geographical region it will be present in that only you will not see that in any other continents okay for example here we have very good example of sphenodon sphenodon is only present in new zealand it's a reptile sphenodon is a reptile you can only find this reptile in the new zealand you cannot find it somewhere else so it's a restricted distribution that means organism are present in one particular geographical region double coconut in seychelles seychelles is also one it's very small country it's like an island so this one have coconuts usually when you break the coconut you find a single coconut but there you have double coconuts two coconuts in one right so double coconuts is only found in seychelles then we have the discontinuous one in discontinuous one same organism that one organism like elephants can be found in two different geographical region for example africa comes in ethiopian continent right or we can say the bi geographical realm and india comes in the oriental one but still both have elephants so that type of a distribution of organism is discontinuous so two different geographical regions so this explains that might be when there was pangaea the india was present near to the africa so when the tectonic movements occurred that breaks up and india moved to the some other portion so this explains that might be these two were attached somewhere in the past history okay again alligator you see that in us as well as in japan so this is how uh, it is said that maybe the japan was little attached with the us somewhere okay so this is how the organisms they were uh, compelled to move from their original location because there was movement of their entire continental plate okay so this was a study done by alfred wallis now next study of biogeographical evidence was done by charles darwin charles darwin went to galapagos island galapagos island where are they let me show you here are galapagos island somewhere here right near the south america so he went to galapagos island on this ship and the name of the ship is h m s beagle so darwin also went to voyage he went to galapagos island on his ship not his uh, this was a government ship okay <laughs> so on h m s beagle on a voyage to do his research so what he found out in the galapagos island he found that organisms were different organisms were different 
the one organism he got so much attracted to was darwin's finches finches means birds very little birds he gave the name darwin's finches finches means birds so he did a lot of study on the birds he found out that the bird which were present on the galapagos island it resembles exactly like that was present in the mainland that is south america but the only difference was in the sea in the beak what was the difference beak in the south america they had a bird and that bird is the seed eating bird the bird used to eat seed but when they compared that seed eating bird of south america with the bird of the galapagos island the only difference was in the beak was in the beak so by that he concluded and uh, gave one theory of adaptive radiation so adaptive radiation says that process of evolution of different species in a given geographical area starting from a point and literally radiating to other areas of geography so we have done the divergent evolution in homologous organ so in that i have told you when the organisms have a similar origin and they go to different they go to different habitat they when they go to different habitat they found different types of circumstances and they show evolution and they change okay so organism having origin same origin but they are having different structures why because when they went to different habitats they modified themselves so this type of evolution was divergent evolution the evolution or the change that is occurring is divergent evolution but the phenomenon here is adaptive radiation this phenomenon is known as adaptive radiation okay that they are moving and going here and there is the entire phenomenon is adaptive radiation but the type of evolution that is occurring is divergent evolution so see you can see here uh, this is a darwin's finch's best example he said that the original one this was the original ancestor finch the original ancestor finch was the seed eating finch it was a seed eating bird or a finch okay now when this bird it, uh, this flew to galapagos island because in the mainland that bird was not getting enough food so this bird it decided to move to the another island and that island was galapagos in galapagos island there were no competition there were no other organism but the food was so much it's like a new land with a lot of food and a lo lot of opportunities okay so when that finch arrived on the galapagos island the finch with time undergoes divergent evolution and when that finch undergo divergent evolution the finch adapted according to the food that was present on the island for example some finches they started pecking the wood so that becomes woodpecker finch some becomes warbler some started eating cactus so they it was a cactus which uh, finch right so some becomes like fruit eaters some becomes insect eaters so and some remains the seed eaters so this is how the finches they adapted themselves and the only adaptation that occurred was in their shape of their beak so when darwin finches put all the finches together the only difference that was in their beak everything was same right so this was a study done by darwin many years back but when the genes genetics biotechnology came later on they did the genetic research on these finches and it found out that the only uh, gene that was different was the beak gene the rest of the gene was same and we can say they belongs to the same genus but different species right so this is how the uh, darwin explained beautifully that how the distribution of organisms ac according to their land or biographical uh, biographically when organisms are far apart how they can adapt show divergent evolution and this entire process is adaptive radiation okay similar another example of adaptive radiation is marsupials marsupials are usually seen in australia right marsupials are a kind of mammals what are they they are mammals okay like we are mammals we belongs to primates they are of different order all right so now marsupials they were separated 
when the tectonic movement occur when australian continent moved apart the marsupials got the opportunity to grow in the australia because it was very far away from the mainland the primates like us we cannot dominate them right so in the another land why you can't see the marsupials the reason is because in those land the organisms were dominated on the marsupials and marsupials they vanished or they were not able to evolve okay but in the australia since there was no competition no other organism it was a new habitat no invader was there no other species was there which was dominant so marsupials they grew much right so they undergo or they went the uh, divergent evolution and they become like they get evolved into different types of organism like koala what is this koala this is bandicoot this is wombat kangaroo you all know yes these are pouched mammal the marsupials are also known as pouched mammals because they have pouch in which they uh, put their young ones okay then we have marsupial rat this is banded ant eater you can also see this in your ncert this is tiger cat this is tasmanian wolf tasmania is a very small island under the territory of uh, australia right then we have this sugar glider and then this is marsupial mole all these are marsupials they evolved from a single origin ancestral origin and then they uh, you know beautifully evolved okay so that's the example of adaptive radiation adaptive radiation is a process or it's a phenomenon in which divergent evolution is occurring organism from the same origin they are moving apart into different geographical locations and then they are uh, changing and adapting according to the environment like darwin's finches and marsupials all right so next we have is this chart you can must have seen this in ncert all right so what's this these organisms they are placental mammals they are primates like us okay these are australian mammals these are australian mammals so it is said that it is said that in australia imagine this was australia two types of divergent evolution or two types of adaptive radiations were going on but both were going on a very different geographical regions on a very different geographical regions here was occurring marsupials adaptive radiation they were radiating and evolving at the same time the placental mammals at the same time the placental mammals they were also evolving they were also evolving right so when when their evolution ended and whatever organisms they have formed their end result was same for example the placental the placental for example this was evolution of placental mammal they formed mole so exact kind of a mole was marsupial mole was formed right similarly the placental mammal they form ant eater by evolution similar type of organism was also formed in the marsupial and that is numbat that was numbat so it is said that when more than one adaptive radiation appear to we have occurred in isolated geographical area represented different habitat one can call this as convergent evolution so all these two they belong to different origin this was marsupial this was placental mammal but the resultant is the same when you have different origin and results come the same or the structure modification is the same or the function they are performing is the same that shows convergent evolution you got it it is said that it is saying that whenever you have an isolated geographical area that means isolated geographical area is your uh, uh, australia okay this is isolated geographical area in this isolated isolated geographical area both are growing in different habitats both are growing in different habitat like this is habitat number 1 and this is habitat number 2 that means both will not fight for anything okay 
Now, this one is marsupial that are undergoing adaptive radiation. These are the placental mammals. Since both have different origin, that means the group is different. So the so the this is how they're evolving, okay, by adaptive radiation. So, but when you will see both, that how these both are evolving and showing the same structural modification and they are performing similar function, one can also call it as a convergent evolution. Okay, so you can see. Here in placental mammal you have mole, here you have marsupial mole. Here you have anteater, here you have numbat. Here you have mouse, you have marsupial mouse. Here you have lemur, you have spotted cuscus. You have flying squirrel, you have flying phalanger. You have bobcat, you have Tasmanian tiger cat. You have wolf and you have Tasmanian wolf, right? So this is how when two adaptive radiations are going on in one isolated geographical area in different habitat, this is convergent evolution, okay? All right. So let's solve some question because this is the most important topic from need point of view a population of a species invade a new area which of the following condition will lead to adaptive radiation okay simple question you need to understand the question first it is saying if there is a species for example darwin's finches okay it is invading new area new area is galapagos island now, what condition should be there in that area that adaptive radiation should take place? First, area with many habitat occupied a large number of species. Area with large number of habitat having very low food supply. Area with a single type of vacant habitat. Area with many types of vacant habitat. Okay, first of all, in the new area where finches were going, what was the opportunity? There were no competitor and food was so much. Okay. So we say that area with many habitat, but there was no competitor. So this is wrong. It is saying already they have species. If already they have species, might be finches would not survive. Area with large number of habitat with low food? No. Because they were in the search of food, that's why they flew there. Area with single type of vacant habitat? If the habitat would be single, then the Darwin's finches remain the sim single species. But since they went to the different habitat, some went to the tree, some went to the f uh, fruit bearing trees. So they went to different habitat with a lot of food supply. So this is how they underwent the evolution. So area with many vacant habitats and with a lot of food supply can lead to the adaptive radiation. So answer is D. Okay, next. In Australia, marsupials and placental mammals have evolved to share many similar characteristics. This type of evolution may be referred as simple convergent evolution. So in Australia, both are doing adaptive radiation. So this is a type of convergent evolution. So if it has just asked about marsupials, in Australia, marsupials have evolved. What type of evolution they show? That is adaptive radiation. And the evolution is divergent evolution. Next. The process by which organisms with different evolutionary history evolve similar phenotypic adaptations in response to a common environmental challenge is called. Okay, the process by which organism with different evolutionary history means their origin is different and the adaptation is same. Example, wings. Now, what type of evolution this will be? This will be a convergent evolution. Answer is A. Okay, next. Next evidence we are going to talk about are your fossil evidence or we also call them as paleontological evidences. The word paleontology is used for fossil, the study of fossil is known as paleontology. Out of all the evidence we have seen or we have shown that yes evolution is happening. They all were just a kind of a theory. Sometimes we have proof, sometimes we don't have. Even if we have, it's not completely reliable. But fossils are what? They are the proofs that yes, such kind of organism was present on the earth. Like we got the fossils of dinosaurs. So we know somewhere if we have the proof that skeleton of dinosaurs are seen, that means somewhere the dinosaurs were present on the earth. So we considered them as the most reliable evidence. Most reliable evidence. Because these are the set proof. Yes, these organisms were present. Okay. Right now, whatever evidences we have, 
given it's on the basis of what is present on earth right now and how they have evolved but nobody has talked about what were their ancestors were like so fossil evidences talk about what the ancestors were like and this is how they have evolved right now today so these are the kind of the set proofs evidences we are given right now what are fossil fossils are remains of hard parts of life forms found in the rocks and which rocks sedimentary rocks let me explain you in detail for example dinosaurs were living on the planet earth okay so this is how the dinosaurs were living okay so dinosaurs were happily living but some time came when the food entirely vanished or we can say some catastrophic movement occur or meteorite uh, it strike or ice age came these all dinosaur they died they all died okay when they died they started getting inside the layers of the rocks of the earth because uh, whenever whenever the new soil is formed the above layer moves down and down okay so they get uh, into the sedimentary layers of rock all right so this is imagine this is the surface right now the above surface okay this is where you are standing so with time these organism they they started getting compressed inside the layers of the rock okay now the pressure was very high here the pressure was very high here they got completely compressed and later on the whatever body parts they have when whatever organic parts they have they started getting replaced first of all obviously the dead body will get decay after it get decay the other hard parts get remain sometime we get the skeletons or the hard parts of the organism they are also fossil but if the organism is very like uh, very old if the fossil is very old maybe the fossil is present in this layer of the rock okay so that means this one is older than this one this one is younger right both are dead doesn't mean they are living so this is the oldest fossil and this is the youngest one okay so now if this organism is here might be you will not even see the skeleton of the organism you only see impression of the organism in the rock layers for example uh, you must have seen pop plaster of paris you put any leaf in the pop and let it dry when you will take away the leaf and you will see the pop an impression will be formed okay so such kind of impressions are also fossil so depending upon how old the fossil is and how uh, old the organism's date of death is on that depends that what part of fossils can be obtained from that organism if it is very young you might see the skeletons if it is not that young you might see some other metals by which the organism has been replaced so the design of the organism can be seen there or impression of the organism can be seen there if it is older than that the the that fossils may have get converted into coal or something like that okay so now how can you study the age of the fossil the first method is a relative method okay how can you determine the age one is a relative method for example this is the earth crust and these are the sedimentary layer of the rock as i've told you so any organism that is present this is like surface of the earth upper surface any organism which is present on this layer will be the youngest one and any organism that is present in the deepest layer will be the oldest one okay so first thing by which you can make a guess that how old the organism is on the basis of where you find the fossil okay so in relative method what we see on the basis of on the basis of layer of rock we guess the age of fossil all right okay next method which can give you a little idea with the time are your uh, radioactive dating method you must have done radioactive dating or half life in the chemistry right so every like metal it gets de decay so half of it gets decay in which time you call it as uh, the half life for example if this one metal it takes uh, 10 years to get into its half amount that is its half life 
you do it in chemistry also so one method is the clock of the rock method in which you see you assume that if one one million gram of uranium takes around so like 1 million gram of uranium take approximately 1 year to gets converted into 17600 gram of lead so if i know this is the amount of uranium it takes this time to get converted into lead i'll check the amount of the lead in the half life and this is how i can judge the age of the fossil next method is carbon dating where carbon 14 gets converted into carbon 12 right at the time of your death you have the ratio of uh, this uh, carbon 14 12 around equal we have more of a basically the carbon 14 and uh, you know the carbon 12s ratio into like 1 or 1 right so carbon 14 gets converted into carbon 12 when you die and your body is under the rocks right so it takes with the half life of 5568 years similarly the potassium argon method is another method in which we see that how much potassium has been converted into argon and their half life is also around billion years so if the fossil is more than around 1 billion years ago old we go for potassium argon method okay so in potassium argon method we usually go for hominid fossils the human fossils right human fossils they are uh, usually their age is determined by potassium argon method and the last method we have is resonance spins uh, sorry electron spin resonance method this is the technique uh, where we see the resonance of uh, the electrons and uh, this is how we check uh, the age of the fossil and this is the most reliable one how does it work this can be simply explained by your chemistry teacher you can ask them right okay so this is how you can determine the age of the fossil so what can we do after determining the age by determining the age we can get to know that how old our ancestors were so you won't believe uh, these uh, scientists and theorists they come together they found the age of the fossils and they came up with geological time scale that means they made the entire time scale of evolution how let's see so they divided the entire uh, this uh, uh time scale into era then into period epoch and age for example we have uh, uh, uh days days they comprise they form week week form month and month form year just like that we have a bigger one like an year we have era and then we have some periods in one era and in the periods we have epochs and epochs uh, along with that we are showing the ages that in how many or how much million years ago it was right my means million years ago and then what event took place at that time so we'll start with the first era that is the oldest one which is proterozoic that leads to the starting of evolution so it is said that the proterozoic the primitive era the first era where the evolution started was around 4500 years ago or 4.5 billion years ago where the origin of earth took place then it took 500 million years to form the life on earth that means around 4000 million years ago the life on the earth was originated then 3000 year ago the first non cellular form of life came that means like your biomolecules came carbohydrates you know lipids they came and they form the quasarvates microspheres right like those particles eobionts then 2000 million years ago or 2 billion years ago first cellular form of life came the first cell was formed then 1500 years ago the, it comes the first eukaryotic cell the cell first form it was a prokaryote okay from prokaryote then originates the eukaryote then multicellular eukaryotes were formed around 700 million years ago so this was a proterozoic the primitive era where the origin of life was taking place okay then comes the next one paleozoic now let's start with the animal kingdom sequence okay in paleozoic the invertebrates came in the cambrian you learn the entire periods were as cost cp cost cp okay so cambrian was the one where origin of invertebrates took place ordovician was the one which was the age of invertebrates what's the difference in this one around 500 million years ago the invertebrates were formed but around uh, 540 million years ago invertebrates were formed but 500 million years ago 
that means in ordovician the a number of invertebrate was so much on the land they dominated if we compare with the other species other animals the number the amount of the species which is more we always call it as a dominant species and we call their age age of the invertebrate invertebrates were most okay then insulurian sorry insulurian insular insulurian around 440 million years ago first vascular plant came and also at that same time pisces came p for plant p for pisces okay then in devonian because pisces came in the silurian so after that pisces number increases the fishes number increases the that this was the age of fishes so the most common question that is usually asked which is the age of fishes devonian so when fishes were dominant the origin of amphibian took place in the same same period and that was devonian so in devonian the fishes were more in number but at the same time amphibians came into existence so in the next period carboniferous the amphibians were more so this was the age of amphibians so you can see around 360 million years ago the amphibians were more right and then came the permian in which reptiles were originated but these reptiles they look like mammals so origin of mammal like reptiles it's not mammals they are still the reptile this is a sequence how you study in animal kingdom first invertebrate then in the chordata we study fishes then amphibians then reptiles and then mammals okay now the mammal like reptiles were originated there comes the next era mesozoic mesozoic is considered as the golden era for reptiles gold golden era of reptiles why because reptiles were dominant in the entire mesozoic era no animal was dominated at that time right so it comes in triassic jurassic and cretaceous you must have seen the movie jurassic jurassic is related with dinosaur so in triassic dinosaur they appear in jurassic they were dominant in cretaceous they started dying okay this is how their life was so around 240 million years ago the dinosaur appeared on earth around 200 million years ago the dinosaurs were so much the one i have highlighted you have to learn those if you uh, and these one all are important these years are all important okay now <clears throat> 200 years ago Th this was the age of reptiles and reptiles were dominant because dinosaurs were there right and dinosaur they comes under reptiles next in cretaceous around 140 years ago dinosaur they start to get extinct because dinosaur were huge organism so with dinosaur only gymnosperms could have survived so if you have seen the movie jurassic park you must have seen that uh, the trees uh, in that era when dinosaur used to exist were tall trees not the shorter ones and tall trees are gymnosperms so when dinosaur they started to die at that time angiosperm they appeared because angiosperms are little plants right whereas gymnosperms are tall plants so they can only survive with the dinosaur so when the dinosaur they were extincting that leads to the origin of angiosperm you can see here right that leads to the origin of angiosperms all right so there comes the next era and that's our era cenozoic okay cenozoic this is the golden era for mammals and under this we have two period tertiary and quaternary and we have some epochs and learn the epochs with pomp and then h right so it is said that the first period was tertiary under this the first epoch was paleocene in paleocene around 65 million years ago there were no dinosaur left on the planet earth so dinosaur they completely disappear because the dinosaur they disappeared it give the opportunity for the mammals to appear when the dinosaurs were there the origin of the origin of birds also took place side by side the birds because they can fly they can easily survive with dinosaur but mammals the mammals at that time when dinosaur was were present was those who are um, you know um, what you say shrew like these mammals were like who can make a hole and they can hide under the land or 
you know soil because if they come up the dinosaur would eat them so mammals which were not getting diversified due to dominance of the dinosaur but when the dinosaur they disappeared around 65 million years ago that gave the opportunity for the mammals to come up so as a result in eocene mammals started getting diversifying div means they started getting diversifying in oligocene the apes appeared when the apes appeared there started the evolution of humans because our ancestors are apes right then miocene came where the primates they diversify more in pliocene ape like ancestors of human appear the ape like ancestors like ramapithecus they appear during this time okay which were basically our ancestors in pleistocene around 1.8 million years ago the origin of true man occurred like us right and in holocene this is the one which is ongoing so a most common question that can be asked is holocene which is the one which is getting along like right now we all are living in the holocene okay so uh, what you have to learn in this entire chart because this is so much for you to learn is the one which i have underlined just go for those okay so uh this was about how fossils can help you to find the age of fossils and then you can get to know about your evolution the last evidence that we're going to talk about is biochemical evidences what are biochemical evidences these are the evidences which is basically based on biochemistry proteins and genes okay now you all know gene is what gene is a fragment of dna and dna forms rna and rna forms protein okay let me give an example of a protein that is trypsin trypsin is an enzyme made up of a protein and it is present in all vertebrates in the digestion of all vertebrates so that means if i am a vertebrate i am having a trypsin if a dog is a vertebrate the dog is also having a trypsin okay so that means this dna or the gene which is forming the trypsin is present in all vertebrates so all vertebrate have at least a same gene that is a gene forming trypsin so this is how many proteins are similar in us so if number of proteins are similar in us so somewhere our genetic formation is also similar so this is how we look different maybe some genes with evolution they got changed but these genes which are similar in us they tells about a common ancestry that somewhere we are common in the origin okay another point if we talk about apes apes have hemoglobin and blood proteins like us so that means if uh, they have hemoglobin and blood proteins like us again the genes can be similar so talking about the mitochondria mitochondria is also present in plants it is also present in us yes and whenever the botany teacher teaches you respiration in mitochondria they never say it's different in animals so your zoology teacher will teach you respiration differently no they never ask you to go for this why because the process of respiration in mitochondria is same in both of us in plants and animals right so that means if it is same the enzymes are same if enzymes are same the genes are same so somewhere we also have a common ancestry far 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 away with the plants also so these are the biochemical evidences which tells us about the evolution that might we all have a common ancestor and then with a million and billion years ago we diversified so here is the end of all the evidences in the next class we'll be dis discussing about the you know different theories given by lamarck and darwin it's going to be very interesting so i'll meet in the next class till then bye bye take care and please read the ncrt very well